Thomas Akempis said this, The more a man is united within himself and becometh inwardly simple and pure, so much the more and higher things doth he understand without labour, for that he receiveth intellectual light from above. Jesus said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Matthew 5, 8. First of all, we're not talking about childishness, but childlikeness, not infantile, but a purity, a lack of guile. It's because of this lack of ulterior motives or cunning that children have a natural affinity with truth. Truth has no guile, it simply is, and the childlike heart is able to discern it. Jesus, who is the truth, encountered constant and unrelenting opposition from the intellectuals. The reason for this is interesting. Their learning had awakened all kinds of voices within them, the root of all of them being the same, pride, intellectual pride. They were contentious, judgmental, fastidious, cynical, self-defensive and self-justified. Above all, they were afraid. Their inner turmoil had deafened them to the sweet sound of truth. There was just simply too much interference. A common phenomenon is when a person goes to sleep with a problem and he awakes with the solution. This is because the voices have been temporarily suspended. The more learning we have, the greater care we need to take. The greatest achievement is to become learned, but to have a childlike heart. And a childlike heart is a heart at peace. Children are naturally humble, small in their own eyes, living in a world of giants and sages. Their inner landscape is pure and unspoiled, and the air is clear. Pride fills the heart with discord, but humility is at rest. Pride cannot receive, humility is receptive. The proud is subjected to such loud and insistent voices that he cannot recognise truth without great effort. The humble recognises it straight away. Before he can even put words to what he recognises, he just knows the truth. Thomas Akempis tells us that this is a valuable addition to our characters, and he identifies the secret of attaining it in our doing all things unto the glory of God, a singularity of life and purpose. He says this, a pure, sincere and stable spirit is not distracted, though it be employed in many works, for that it, for that it works all to the honour of God, and inwardly being still and quiet, seeks not itself, in anything it doeth. Beautiful words. If we seek to please God in everything, then we are impervious to disappointment or frustration, because we can please him wherever we are, whatever our day brings, and whether we succeed or fail. But if I seek to be rich or at ease or popular or healthy even, I am vulnerable to disappointment and frustration maybe many times in one day. There is no peace within for the wicked. No wonder then that he cannot hear the truth. But the pure in heart live or die to the glory of God. When they are praised, they thank God. When they are condemned, they leave their judgment to God. They have no need to defend themselves. As Paul said, I have learned to be content with whatever comes my way. When you can truly feel that you are in a world of giants and are happy, you've reached a place that few ever reach. And in the words of Rudyard Kipling, yours is the earth and everything that's in it. Beloved, we are miracles of God. That's something to fill us with continual joy.